Yo, what's going on, guys? Koi here. Uh, you know, this is going to be probably the most advanced combat guide out there, hands down. I have a list of things that I want to cover, especially new mechanics, old mechanics, and everything else, such and such, new tricks, old tricks, all that good stuff. And, uh, yeah, this is going to be the most advanced combat guide and probably the only combat guide that you will ever need, especially if you just kind of, like, follow through. You'll understand every single in-game mechanic that there is, and we'll go based off of that and see how it goes. Okay, so let's go ahead and get down to the basics. First things first, I want you guys to check out your menu. A lot of people do not know this, but you could actually change a lot of the uh, main settings that you kind of need, which is the combat type input, where you could change it to keyboard if you're more of like a Street Fighter fan, or you could keep it at mouse if you're more of a Xenoverse fan. Uh, we have lock on camera type. There is forced by default and there's also free cam. What this means is whenever you actually lock on to something, this is what forced is. But what the other version is, is you kind of can see them, but you can move in any direction that you want. You can even move your camera. But you'll still be locking on move wise and everything like that. Uh, I just want to get through the main mechanics of the game so far so you guys can understand what I'm talking about whenever we go through a very advanced mechanic. So first things first, there is a uh, left, 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 right, right, right. So these are different, uh, you know, you could create different combos depending. We'll get into that. I just want to let you guys know that that is the combat system that we are going to be using in the game. And as you can see, the middle mouse button, which is the scroll wheel, this uh, you click on that, you use that, and then you can lock on to somebody. Uh, you'd be surprised at how many people don't know this stuff. Okay, so to charge, you're going to be holding down shift. And then to, uh, you can pretty much, uh, move around just by holding down space, and you'll see that you can fly. The fastest way to fly is actually just by holding down a strafe, which is W, A, or W, D. And you'll see that, like, obviously I'll be flying faster than if I was doing this the entire time. That is, uh, pretty much does it with a lot of the main mechanics. There are some other ones that I do want to go over, such as the block. To block, uh, you have to hold down R. And the parry, as you can see, is a very small window. I would never really recommend using the parry window. Yes, it doesn't waste stamina, but at the same time, the window is so tight to the point where there's a high chance you might just mess up hands down that's just a lot of problems that people have another thing is if you hold down the uh your click i mean you hold down your r and you click that's a grab so your left your left the left punch that is a grab if you hold down r and then it is a stamina break if you do it with uh the other one which is your right click and that is a stamina break Another one we got to talk about is whenever you're holding down that R, you can see at the bottom of my screen on the bottom right, there are evasives. There are different evasives in the game. The most important one is after image. You kind of want to keep that one because it's the cheapest evasive out of all of them. It only costs one bar to use, and that's pretty much it. You also need to be careful with trying not to block a lot because if you're blocking the entire time, your stamina bar will go down, as you can see. I do want to explain the key bar, at least. So to get your ultimate attacks, all you have to do is make the key bar reach blue. And then purple is like a bonus. So that just kind of like is like bonus energy that you can keep on hand for later, as you can see. So uh, that is a lot of the main mechanics of the game. Uh, to pretty much transform, you're going to be holding down G and then clicking on whatever button you got. You can turn the aura off or you can turn the aura on. Uh, H is going to be your itemization. You just click it. You don't really need to, like, you know, you click it, unclick it, click it, unclick it. All right. And then there's power-ups, which is your T. The rest are pretty much skills. You guys know how skills work. Now, before we get into discussing the most complicated stuff, which is every single type of skill in the game, how they are utilized, what they do, and the different uh, styles of the skills, which ones are more useful than others, what ha what serve a different purpose. You know, before all that, let's get into the main, you know, meat, beef, and potatoes real quick. So that is how to deal with different types of NPCs, and there's only two. 
So this is a boss type NPC, as you can see. You do see the fact that the boss type NPC does have a very, very specific stamina bar. You see how mine up here is uh, uh, has bars. That is my limited amount of dodges. Say if I used after image, I'd be, I'd be moving. You know what I mean? I'd be moving. That cost a bar to do. And, you know, you can also take someone's bar. Now, uh, the average character, right? Uh, average characters don't really have that. Uh, they actually, I mean, uh, average characters have this type of bar, but the bosses do not. They have a uh, pretty much a solid bar. And the solid bar allows you to allows them to actually tank a lot more than you'd think. Now you see this guy, these guys right here, these guys are actually, uh, they have the bar. So one of the things I do want to do is show you that these guys are enemy types, mob type mob. Type skilled. <clears throat> now mobs... The difference between mobs and skilled is literally just based off of which one spams. If you're fighting skilled, skilled mobs actually spam their moves quite a bit more than the actual mobs. And then obviously the boss type. The boss type does lead to the main bar. So let's go ahead and show you guys how to deal with these guys. Uh, skilled and mob, pretty much you deal with them the exact same. I would, I will do the oldest recommendation in the book which is the highest damaging M1s in the game that you can use. It is the cheapest build and best build you can really do for the early game. Not my key build, but actually uh, a melee build, believe it or not. You're going to go to the shop, and you're going to go to the animation shop, because animations do matter in this game. You get the fighting style, you go down to N, and then you will get the nom fighting style. So the nom fighting style is everyone's favorite because it actually comes with the best high damaging multi-hit combos ever. And I'll show you guys how to deal with it. So to deal with these guys is completely different to deal with a boss. So these guys, you kind of want to pressure them. And this is where I'm going to get a little more complicated with the combat mechanics. Such as strafing, hold down your energy obviously, movement, iframes, no iframes. Those depend on skills. But as you can see, we're just going to charge up right here. Uh, you cannot sneak attack them with a stamina break, but you can get them into combat. Make them waste their evasions. As long as you get that first hit in, you're good. And now this is a very, very important part. Now, if you go for the launch, there's two ways you can handle it here. Now, the launch, you could do it with the left click, which just knocks them away. Or you can do it with the right click, which deals extra bonus damage. As you can see, you go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hang on. Now they're out of stamina. Now this is how you deal with it. You stamina break them after they lose their stamina. As you can see, then you go three, three, three. And you continue this very, very specific combo. If you ever L with a, if you land with an L, then there's a high chance that that L will end up putting you in a position where uh, you launch them, which you don't want to do. You don't, you do not want to launch them at all. So I'll do this again for you guys. There are different combos such as the L, 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 and that one leads to a knockup. You make them waste that stamina. And then you go for the right click if you're trying to do extra damage. It's always recommended to go for the right click, but for these guys, you low key just want to keep the, the pressure on them and you want to force them to evade. You don't want them to get any skills off. All right. See how I use my evasion right there? Evasions are incredibly important if you actually want to survive in this game. As you can see, I'm just going to do as much damage as possible. And, you know, with stamina breaks, I actually do get a lot of free damage. I'm not going to lie. This is the best way to get your mastery and everything. All right. Now, let's talk with Turles, and let's go show you how to deal with a boss. Now, a boss is completely different. Now, with a boss, you cannot force them to dodge because they have a lot more meter than the average character, but there is a more specific and more helpful way to deal with it, and that is why we are using the nom style. The nom style shreds through stamina, believe it or not. I'll show you how. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. Watch my, watch my combo bar. Look at his stamina bar. 
As you can see, he's already almost out of stamina. It's a completely different style of bar than it is for an average character. And as you can see, I have not struggled at all dealing with this boss due to the fact that I just am here, uh, just using the same combo over and over again. You want to continue repeating this combo for most bosses, especially if you're a melee build. Now, if you are a key build, this is going to suck for you because with a lot of key builds, you have to make sure that you sacrifice uh, damage physically for key. So in that case, you're going to be doing a completely different style of gameplay, which I will show you. So we're going to go for ultimates. And the best way to do a key build, right? Hang on. Is to launch the character and then go for the ultimate as fast as possible. Spirit Bomb. And as you can see, massive, massive damage. Start charging up. You want to make sure that you do block most of these attacks. The only problem is that energy ball does just so much damage. I got cooked right here. That is my fault. I have no way to dodge. And that energy ball just destroys my shield. Okay, he, he, uh, he messed up right there, which is very, very good. Okay, we're going to go for this. Go for the block. All right, we're going to go for this Kamehameha this time. All right. Now we go for this. Oh, careful. You, uh, another way to get advantage in a lot of, uh, key, uh you know, combat-related events is by using very, very specifically, like, uh, moves that do the, that give you advantage. The only problem is I want to show you, I want to show you guys the moves after I show you guys the showcase. Now, another trick is, right? This is another trick right here. You always want to launch the boss and go for the right click. Because if you could at least go for that too, it's a safer route. And you actually get that bar down too, and you can still work on the boss just like this. Still get him into that combo. It's just much safer to do the launch into a right skill. And then after that, you're pretty much solid. You don't have to deal with him. You just keep hurting him until you beat the boss. Oh. There we go. As you can see, it is a lot safer to go down this route. Oh, you got me. It is safer to go down with the launch route, especially if you just launch them and then just kind of move in with the attacks. Uh, it's much easier with moves, obviously. Some moves are just a lot better than others. Uh, some of the best openers you could do. Uh, this is a trick I learned recently. But, uh, well, not recently. This is a trick I learned a long time ago. But it's never target the boss until the last second. Now you target the boss, and then now you can see he just took a lot of damage. Now I can take advantage of the situation here. There we go. And he's defeated. That's how you deal with bosses. A lot of you, like, newer players, uh, I know it's a little tougher to deal with bosses if you don't understand the combat system. It is a lot more complicated than you think, and we're about to dip into the more complicated parts of the combat system, such as dealing with moves. Now, there are different types of moves in the game, and the different types of moves are uh, very, very specific because they all hold different purposes. There's different types of blast moves. There's different types of melee moves. There's even different types of beam moves that you didn't know about. For instance, uh, ultimates are their own classification of a skill. So ultimate attacks, these always have some type of gimmick, mechanic, or some type of specialty that makes them more unique than most of the moves in the entire game, whether that be a mechanic that allows them to uh, take advantage or a mechanic that allows you to pretty much do more damage in a very specific way. So that really just depends. Some of the best ones are obviously the Spirit Bomb and the Kaioken Finish. These are uh, skills that you could get from early Goku and really take advantage of the early game to late game progress. Trust me. Now, uh, full power energy wave and wave-based abilities. Uh, wave-based abilities you only want to use whenever you get a knock away. You never want to use them off rip because you could risk beam clashing or you could risk uh, pretty much getting it slapped away. And this just never works, especially in a PvP scenario. A lot of people just diss the idea of just using full power energy waves or energy waves in any way, shape, or form, whether that be the Super Kamehameha or the Gallic Gun, anything like that, just because of the fact that, yes, it does look cool, but they also require charging and they also require um, a lot of preparation. And if you don't have the prep time, there's a high chance that you just will not get the move off. 
and I'll show you a prime example of what that would look like. So, for instance, we're going to hit door over here with a knockaway move, which gives us advantage at the start of the match. Then I'm going to start charging up a Kamehameha, and when it is prepared, I will land it. As you can see, I did do a lot of his HP, but he did get advantage because it did require me to charge. You can throw the Kamehameha off rip, especially with ultimates. The only issue is you do risk doing less damage than a move that actually does do a lot more damage. Uh, for instance, I'll show you exactly what that looks like. So I'll just like throw door for a second. All right, come on, door. All right, Kamehameha, just an instant blast for 337 damage. All right, that is 337 damage. All right, now I'm going to charge up another one. Oh, there we go. See right there? Hang on. Let me take advantage. Let me charge up for real quick. And then let me go ahead and hit him with another knock away. All right. Charge up and fire. As you can see, he went straight through it. That is a major problem with beam-based attacks. Okay, so I just wanted to, uh, I'm going to keep jumping whenever I feel like I don't want to waste your time with stuff like preparation or anything like that. So now I'm going to show you guys a full power Kamehameha, and you can see my key. The charge gauge will go up. You see the animation will keep playing until it's full. Then you launch. And as you can see, I do almost two times damage. Well, with an extra 50% extra more damage, is it worth it? I don't know with the preparation time that it is asking for. It's not a lot. You know what I mean? As you can see, even if I feel like I'm not going to get lucky, this is going to be a problem. Now, let's talk about another version of the key attacks. And that is blast-based attacks. Now, blast-based attacks, these are like ones where you shoot one ball or one specific move, like uh, an explosive move or a movement move. And with these attacks, uh, this leads to you uh, pretty much relying on the attack just instantly, like to insta-cast a move. You could use this to even get away from your opponent and really just play uh, Koi, as you can see, either chase or not to be chased. As you can see, he's chasing me with the multi-beam barrage. That is a ultimate. And then he's going to chase with another multi-beam barrage. And then I'm going to throw this. And he does take damage, as you can see right there. It also stops him and stuns him. So you could use this to take advantage or to do the opposite to pretty much, uh, you could either take advantage or you can engage as well. It really just depends on the way that you want to use those types of moves. Now, the reason why these are a little more gimmicky and they are a little more different than if you're going to be using something like a, um, like a key wave specifically is literally due to the fact that these are easier to charge up. They normally don't even require charge up, and they go pretty fast. Now, uh, the only problem with them is that you can't really do much with them after you use it. It's kind of like just one of those things you just kind of want to throw out there. It's in the blast categories. But let's talk about the other category of blast attacks, and that is actually going to be volleys. Now, volleys or any type of multi-hit attacks like this can also force a dodge out of your opponent, which is actually incredibly useful. If you guys have never seen this, uh, pretty much like, let's say we're in the middle of combat, right? I throw the dude. All right. I want him to dodge. So then he's coming at me. I shoot the volley. It's going to force him to dodge. Or he's going to hit me with, an, with, a, with a rush attack. One of the two. So, you know, it really just depends. All right, I'm going to hit him with the energy volley again. He's going to get hit with the volley, and he's going to either dodge or he's not going to dodge. What the crap? This dude just doesn't want to dodge. All right, I'm going to hit him again with the energy volley. All right. This dude, uh, for some reason, this NPC just doesn't want to dodge me. But, you know, that's just the way that these energy beams are. You can use them accordingly, but it really just depends on you. Uh... I'll just, they're really nice to spam, though, after you get a little extra key. Uh, you know, really just depends. As you can see, you can stop your opponent from engaging with you, too. You can also stop other key beams and blasts. Good. All right. I got him. And then we throw the key blasts again. You know, I'm just kind of, like, poking. This is the weakest key blast you can use in the game. Like, all the starter moves are incredibly weak, so don't expect them to do much damage. 
uh, he's not going to dodge, but in most cat in most ways, you are going to end up dodging in some way, shape, or form. All right. Well, that pretty much does it with key blasts. The other one is like explosive type key blasts, which are a lot more complicated because they work a lot like. Uh, I'll, I'll show you what an explosive type key blast looks like real quick. So, uh, I do have one of them, and one of them is actually the first spirit bomb that you get from Goku. Oh, hang on. Oh, darn. As you can see, we're going to charge this up, and we're going to toss it. And an explosive type key blast, I did show you guys what this looks like in the beginning. And these things, you could toss them at pretty much any point in the match. Uh, they are deflectable, but it's incredibly hard to deflect them. They do a lot of damage, and they're actually very useful for clearing trash, especially when you deal with more than one character to deal with. And that is very, very cool. Don't forget, you can deflect beams in this game. It's just that there's very, very specific beams that you can deflect, and that's about it. All right. Next, we're going to go ahead and get into rushes. And the different types of rushes in the game, there are a lot of very specific ones, but I'm going to go through the ones that make the most sense and matter, which is uh, knockback rushes, control rushes, um, combat rushes, and also the uh, just basically a basic skill rush. And there's four types of rushes in the game. Now, one of them I don't think I'm going to be able to use or show you, but it works a lot like Dragon Rush. It's called Flip Kick. Flip Kick is an amazing rush that actually allows you to stun your opponent on impact, allowing you to actually start a combo off rip. The only difference is Dragon Rush does this as well. The only difference is if you try to teleport behind them, you don't get first hit. This does not give you advantage. Only in a key-based scenario does Dragon Rush and other knockback type of rushes give you advantage. I've shown you what Dragon Rush can do. It's a knockback. But there's also uh, combat rushes and skill rushes. And I'll show you what a skill rush looks like too. Uh, for instance, uh, high-speed rush is probably the best example of what a skill rush is. Or an Orn combo is a personal favorite of everybody. So let's go ahead and pop that one on here. This is for physical damage moves, obviously, but we're going to use Orn Combo. Orn Combo is a skill rush that you have to use as a combo extender. So let's say I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I go in. Uh, normally, he like either wants to dodge or something like that, but I guess not. All right, that's okay. I guess he doesn't want to dodge. I honestly put this on a bad key for me because it's kind of hard to see. As you can see right there, that is a skill rush that allows me to pretty much get up close and personal with the enemy, and I have less to deal with whenever he's in that position, and it does a good amount of damage. That's kind of what skill rushes are for. They're kind of like just a better version of what an M1 combo would be. That's a skill rush. Now, the other one is the uh, uh, combat rush, which is a move. It's kind of like exactly like a skill rush. The only difference is it allows you to do it from a distance. As you can see, the only issue with these is that they can dodge out of these. See, right there. So that's the only difference between these rushes. The best version is probably Dragon Rush and other types of skill rushes. Obviously, it does less damage, but the big difference is the fact that you can take advantage by using other moves in tandem. So we're going to go for boom. As you can see, major damage with that move. And then we're going to go ahead and throw a Spirit Bomb. All right, so y'all are, I hope you guys are starting to understand the combat in this game. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move on to, uh, we already finished all rushes, so let's go ahead and talk about counters. Counters are very, very important in this game. I always put my one on counter because they're so valuable in this game, uh, and they stop people from rushing you. And this is very, very important. Uh, there are some counters that give you high damage. There's also counters that give you uh, really, really good uh, attacks as well. Like, they allow you to actually follow up with attacks and stuff like that. Very, very important. So, I'm going to show you guys what that looks like. Let's go ahead and charge up. The only thing that is the problem is that using these counters, or these evasives, so to speak, uh, the only problem with them is they do require you to get uh, use stamina. So, if you do run into stamina, this is going to be a problem for you. Uh, we want to bait him into a rush. We're going to bait the guy into a rush. The best way to do that is gaining distance. And then right there. Boom, right there. You saw that? That's when you press a 1. 
and that's when you use rushes like that. The only difference is, like, obviously more people have more than one rush, but luckily these things are incredibly cheap. The cooldown is a bit much, but if done correctly, you can take advantage of the situation, even do a follow-up attack key blast, as you can see. So, in my personal opinion, deflects and counters, playing defensively is probably your best bet. As you can see, just dodge all the beams, go for a grab, charge up my ultimate, humans get a faster ult charge, toss that thing, boom. Mine wins because it actually was an ultimate, his was not. I'll just keep moving. Boom, counter back. As you can see, this is very, very important type of gameplay that you need to understand because a lot of people will mess this up very poorly and it's, it just sucks, you know what I mean? Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Oh, those, those are really hard to actually tell what's going on with that. Oh. There we go, come on. Okay, so the last bit we're gonna, t well, the last couple bits we're gonna talk about are some of the more skill-based ones, which are power-ups, ultimate attacks. Well, we already talked about ultimate attacks, kind of. These, you already know how to use them at this point because I pretty much discussed that part. Well, let's talk about evasives, transformations, and power-ups. Now, I have neither, but if you actually do get to a certain point, you are able to use very, very specific power-ups. And these things I have on my other account, which I don't know. I'm probably just going to rock with this instead and just kind of like explain what they do. So these are like power-ups and they allow you to pretty much make a build and then work with that build based off of the moves of the character. It's a little complicated, but the best way I could explain it is like Birder. Birder can use, uh, he gets a multiplier bonus with any Ginyu Force move and any Birder specific move, which he, they are all over the, the wiki. Uh, if you guys want to know what the wiki is, just hit me up on Discord. It should be on my Discord, and I'll be able to just shoot you a link really quickly. Uh, I don't know if I should just, like, link it here because, like, I don't know. It's a little, like, I don't know. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. I'll do it. And, you know, that's it. So, uh, yeah, so it's pretty much like a build. You could pre-build, but honestly, that's not really required because there are a lot of moves that just do more damage because they are the way they are. Uh, for instance, like one of the greatest moves in the game is literally Meteor Combination. It literally does the most damage out of like any type of aggressive movement. Uh, we're also going to talk about these, which are transformations. Transformations have to be mastered, uh, but that's not really what this guide is about. If you guys want a mastery guide, uh, I'll do it. Just let me know if you want me to do it because I totally will. It's so easy to actually get mastery down. And understanding the full mechanics of mastery and everything like that. It's just that I don't want to make this video drown. Uh, so yeah, that pretty much does it for most of the combat in the game. I think that I think I literally just covered everything. There's not anything that I can say that I did not cover. The only thing is like basically, I yeah, I actually showed you every single defensive type of gameplay. I showed you every single offensive type of gameplay, including explaining the different types of attacks and all that stuff. So I do hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell down below. If you guys got any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know. All right, take it easy and peace out.